Hina is an interesting character in the Orange Juice series as well as an extremely cool boss fight in the game she's in, being the final boss in Siguri and also a part of an extra boss fight in Sora. The way she attacks, the music in her battle, and the setting of it all accumulating to Hime becoming one of my favorite fights in the game. I wanted to make this video to go over why Hime is not only an amazing boss, but how she also became one of my personal favorite Orange Juice characters. Hime is the proclaimed guardian god of the ship that Shifu and his crew invade Earth in. We got our first real look at Hime, who sealed away in a sleeping state until Shifu wakes her up and gives her a mission. A kill severity. Hime promptly declines and asks to know the reason why Shifu wants her gone. After Shifu refuses to tell her, Hime announces that she won't obey Shifu's orders, which frustrates him. Shifu then threatens that if Hime refuses to obey him, he'll blow up the ship's citizen clock. Knowing that Shifu is deranged enough to actually do that, Hime decides to fight Siguri. Hime turns around and introduces herself, and having a brief chat with Siguri. Eventually, the two of them get led out to a more open area outside of the ship. The start of the final stage now underway. Hime takes Siguri to the long corridor. Bree and other robots are flying by, which Hime helps get rid of but if you're not careful, her attack can hurt you. One thing that I absolutely love about this stage is the music syncs up when Sagari and Hime break out of the ship and are seen flying out into the sky. It's such a wonderful setup to the actual fight and it puts my smile on my face no matter how many times I go through it. Now that the two of them are out in the open, the final battle can commence. I'm not going to go too heavily into Hime's attacks and the hypers that she uses, but she does have a few interesting moves. As you lower her HP, Hime will start unleashing bigger and harder hyper attacks. First, she'll summon a variety of swords that will fly sideways that you have to weave through carefully. Afterwards, she'll summon even more swords in an even crazier fashion, where you have to dash through the red swords but avoid the blue ones. Hime's final hyper once you get down to her last health bar. She'll float to the center of the stage and summon giant crystals, which are all alternate between red ones and blue ones. You have to sort of find like a certain rhythm to when they'll alternate. Once you manage to stop Hime, Hime comments on how strong Siguri is. She remarks that she had a lot of fun dancing with Siguri, which Siguri ends up calling Hime a kid. Hime doesn't argue with Siguri, and instead changes the topic to talk about how they'll take down the piece of scum that is Shifu. Siguri and Hime team up and use their power to separate the civilian block to defuse Shifu's threat. No more cards left to pull, Shifu makes one last ditch effort and plans to drop the whole ship on him. Siguri determined not to let that happen, she gathers up all her strength and manages to stop Shifu once and for all. With the threat of that megalomaniac gone, Siguri is able to welcome Hime as well as the rest of the ship's inhabitants with open arms. Hime gracefully accepts her invitation to live on Earth and it's now the start of a long and wonderful friendship between the two guardians. There's not too much info on what happens with Hime and Siguri after the events of Siguri. In Acceleration 1, there's the story involving No Name as well as the questionably canon story where Saki makes pudding and ends up fighting everyone, including QP for some reason. Again, it's more of like a dream sequence, so it's hard to say if it's really canon or not, but it's fun nonetheless. It's a cute little story. There's also little ending scenes characters get after finishing Arcade with them. Siguri's ending goes over her operation with Project 1. Nanako finds some pet dog, etc, etc. Everyone gets a neat little story. Well, everyone except Hime. Anyway, what we can learn is that in Kyoko's ending story, Kyoko is living together with the other Shifu brands. It doesn't explicitly say that Hime and Siguri are living together, but the way Kyoko were to request to Nanako to fetch Hime and Siguri we make a reasonable assumption that the two are living together. Next up is Acceleration of Siguri 2. Here everyone has their own story chapter, even though it kind of ends up following the same plot routine. Random tangent, there's something about Hime that gives me the impression that we never really see her fight at full power. In her fight with Siguri, it felt as if she was testing Siguri's resolve. At the end of it, Hime is impressed with Siguri and neither of the two seem tired or wounded. And then with Sora, 
Aimee and Suguri were more so fighting in self-defense and trying to calm down Sora, who was quite angry. They were tagging each other out, trying to calm down Sora, so she could actually listen to reason. I'm kinda curious to see what Himei would be like if she broke her own chains and went all out. So enough about what Himei does in the actual games, more on what really draws me to the pretty little dancer that is Himei. To be honest, I've always kind of liked Himei a fair amount. Pretty, has a sweet design, I like how she carries herself, and she always left a strong first impression when I initially saw her in 100% orange juice between her binding chain hyper art as well as the sealed guardian art. Even before touching the other games, I got all my snippets of character interactions from OJ events and eventually the character voice lines. Then the first OJ summer event happened where we got to see Siguri, Sora, and Hime in swimsuits. It was about at that point which really made me aware of how much I love Hime and Siguri together, despite the rampaging Big the Jonathan plot that was the start of the new co-op mode in Hunters and Orange Juice, there was a lot of cute fluff of Hime complimenting Siguri and Siguri getting embarrassed because of it. What really drove home my appreciation for Hime was when I finally sat down and told myself I was going to play and beat Siguri, which happened this past January for when I was doing a streaming challenge where I was going to play through an Orange Juice game. I'd initially watched the playthrough of Siguri a few years prior, but I never actually sat down and played it. Playing it and beating Siguri just felt like a completely whole other experience. Reaching Hime's final level, having her beat my ass for hours, and finally clicking to how to handle her moves and prevail over her fight was such a thrilling experience. Even outside of my huge bias for Hime, it was such an engaging battle with music, background scenery. It was one of those big moments that really sits with you for a few days and you let stew in your mind, you really gotta let it digest. Another big factor for my Hime appreciation is her relationship with Siguri itself. I can't tell you just how much I love these two superpowered girls, and I could probably make another video entirely solely about them if I really wanted to. They've been my main source of brain rot these past several months, and they're currently living rent free in my head. In the grand scheme of orange juice, they don't even have that much content together. The scenes they do have are very cute, and that's what's important. So, yeah, Ime is a wonderful character who's really grown on me, especially in this past year. The character is so sweet and charming. Hime is such a joyful character and I'm always happy to see more Hime content. While there's still so much I feel like I don't know about Hime lore wise, it doesn't change what I do know. And that Hime is such a sweetheart who loves Siguri and the world that she can now call home. <laughs>